Hi again everyone. In this simple video we're going to discuss the domain and the range of a function. And the function we're going to look at is this function here and we're asked to find the maximal domain and the range of this function. But before we get to that, let's motivate the topic. Why is the domain and the range of a function interesting and how is it useful? Well before we get to that, what is the domain of a function and what is the range of a function? Well, in basic terms, the domain of a function is just a set of allowable inputs that will make the function make sense. And the range of a function is just a set of achieved outputs. Now, why is this information important? Well, it's important because basically the domain is designed to ensure that the work associated with the function is well defined. In other words, the work makes sense. And the information can also be used to learn more about how the functions beha function behaves, for example, for graphing purposes. Okay, so let's um, build our intuition a bit and have a look at the following function here. Find the maximal domain and the range of this function. Now, the word maximal here um, means that you want to find the set of all allowable inputs. Okay, sometimes you can restrict the domain of a function. We're not doing that here. We want to find the set of all x values um, such that f of x makes sense. So let's actually write some of this down. So in a nutshell, the domain of a function is the set of all x values or inputs such that the output f of x makes sense or has meaning. So we have to determine all those x values that can be inputted into here that make the function f of x make sense. How can we do that? Well, the first thing we notice is that the square root of 9 minus x squared only makes sense when 9 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0 because we're dealing with real valued functions and we can't take the square root of a negative value. So firstly, observe that our function only makes sense or is well defined when the expression inside the square root sign is greater than or equal to zero. So what we would like to do is to determine all those x values that make this inequality hold. So we're going to solve this inequality for x. Okay, so you can solve this in a number of ways. You can do it um, algebraically or graphically. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, factorise the left-hand side. So I can factorise and form this equivalent inequality. And then it's just a matter of solving this again, either algebraically or um, uh, graphically. I'm going to do it graphically. This is a, I guess, an, an N-shaped parabola that cuts the axis. Or this this left-hand side is, is an N-shaped parabola that cuts the axis at minus 3 and 3. So now we have to identify where does this graph lie above or on the x-axis and it's this part here. So the corresponding x values lie between negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, so we can solve our inequality. x is in this interval here. And by this interval, of course, I mean x is 
greater than or equal to minus 3, less than or equal to 3. So this is our domain. So let's make a conclusion. The domain of f is just this interval here. So for every point in this interval, f of x will make sense. Alright, so that's the first part of the problem. Let's move on to the second part. We're asked to calculate the range of f. Now, let's just, in a nutshell, remind ourselves of what the range of f is. It's just the set of all outputs f of x, where we assume, of course, the x points come from the domain of f. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if we look back at our function, we, we're talking about the positive square root sign here. So if we look, this right-hand side has got to always be greater than or equal to zero. That's one inequality that we're going to use. So the first thing we recognise is that that is greater than or equal to zero. So for all x points in the domain, our function is always non-negative. Okay, and in particular, if x equals positive or negative three, f of x equals zero. So we do have greater than or equals to. It's not just greater than here. Also, note that. Well, can I? Is there another inequality that I can use here? Well. Here I've got the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now, x squared is always non-negative. So we've, we're taking the square root of 9 minus some non-negative number. So in fact, I can form the following inequality. This is just 3 here. Okay, so... Combining this inequality and this inequality, we see that the output has to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 3. So this is the range. This is the range. Now note that x equals 0 is in our dom domain, so we can have equality here, not just um, a strict inequality. All right. So f of x is between 0 and 3 for all x points in the domain and so the range of of f is just this interval here okay so that's that particular problem done let's look at the bigger picture what are some ideas, some techniques that you can use on a whole range of problems? Well, it's just some general advice. To construct the domain, try to form and solve inequalities that are needed to ensure the function makes sense or the function is well-defined. And for the range, try to, to construct the range, try to use f and its domain to form useful inequalities. We, both, we use both of these ideas in the particular example that we just did. Now, it's important that you learn mathematics by doing mathematics, not just watching videos. So here's an example that I'm leaving for you to do. Find the maximal domain and the range of these functions here. Um, the solution is very similar to the example that I've just presented.